In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. As we celebrate this fifth Sunday of Lent, we draw ever closer to our celebration of our Lord's Paschal Mystery. I also see that many of you are celebrating St. Posef Day. That's St. Patrick and St. Joseph. Okay, anyway. Let's prepare ourselves, calling to mind the times we have sinned and asking the forgiveness of our loving Father in heaven. I confess to Almighty God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Pray. 
By your help we beseech you, O Lord our God. May we walk eagerly in that same charity with which out of love for the world your Son handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. I'd like to invite all of the children forward for the Children's Liturgy of the Word. Okay, you guys all ready? Okay. Do you know what you're going to learn about today? Probably St. Patrick, St. Jo- I bet St. Joseph, too. And hopefully you'll learn about Jesus, too, on this fifth Sunday of Lent. And, you know, you guys are going to have fun, and, and we're going to stay back here and cry because we'll miss you. Will you guys write while you're gone? Give us a phone call every now and then. Okay. All right. Go have, go enjoy and learn about Jesus Christ. There you go. All right. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their fathers, the day I took them by the hand to lead them forth from the land of Egypt. For they broke my covenant and I had to show myself their master, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will place my law within them and write it upon their hearts. I will be their God and they shall be my people. No longer will they have need to teach their friends and relatives how to know the Lord. All, from least to greatest, shall know me, says the Lord. For I will forgive their evil doing and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Stop. 
steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence. Take not your Holy Spirit from me. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. In the days when Christ Jesus was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverence. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Some Greeks who had come to worship the Passover feast came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and asked him, Sir, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew, and Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Amen, amen, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it, and whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there also will my servant be. The Father will honor whoever serves me. I am troubled now, yet what should I say? Father, save me from this hour. But it was for this purpose that I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and will glorify it again. The crowd there heard it and said it was thunder, 
But others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered and said, this voice did not come for my sake, but for yours. Now is the time of judgment on this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to myself. He said this indicating the kind of death that he would die. The Gospel of the Lord. Sometimes we can pursue that thing we want with such focus and intensity that we end up missing the point. Hence, giving birth to the adage, sometimes you need to stop and smell the roses. Or sometimes we might observe someone in that situation and say, well, they're their own worst enemy. Their focus is so completely on this one goal that they miss what's truly important. Indeed, sometimes all of us human beings can be our own worst enemy, can't we? We are so determined to get our way that we end up creating a barrier to achieving our greatest good. Throughout the Gospels, we have a theme in which Jesus is ridiculed or threatened or looked down upon shortly before he performs some amazing miracle. When Jesus goes to raise the daughter of the synagogue official, the professional mourners ridicule him for saying the girl is sleeping. Then he raises her from the dead. The Pharisees seem constantly on the prowl to show Jesus' sacrilegious nature by catching him performing a miracle on the Sabbath. And yet, he makes the paralyzed man walk, the blind man see, and the dead man rise. Indeed, prior to the raising of Lazarus, the people there ask, could not the one who opened the eyes of the blind man have done something so that this man would not have died? <laughs> it's kind of incredible, isn't it? We can look at them and look back and say, boy, that's kind of messed up. You would expect to hear this perhaps in the movie Mean Girls. I have never seen the movie Mean Girls, <laughs> but it's got a great title. They don't doubt that he cured the blind man. So in other words, they know he cures people, but instead they criticize him for not curing Lazarus. It's like criticizing Robert Oppenheimer for not making the first nuclear test more colorful. Yeah, it's a big deal, but it could have been prettier. Oh, all this lack of faith, all this constant nastiness took its toll on him. We hear Jesus in our gospel reading today say, I am troubled now. He doesn't say that too often. He says it here. I am troubled now. Yet, what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? But it was for this purpose that I came to this hour. Yeah, the constant opposition, the constant critique of the people he loves and is trying to save harmed him. Although he recognizes that their opposition will be an obstacle to their own salvation, that unless the people ultimately realize that the goal of life is not getting their way, he also recognizes that their persecution of him is the means by which he will save those who are open to his grace. He tells them, 
It was for this purpose that I came to this hour. And unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. We find a Lord who is not only loving, but mature, self-possessed, and assertive. He respects others, but is goal-driven. This is the purpose for which I came, he says. He does not hesitate to sacrifice himself for the good of another, but is no pushover. There is no semblance of pettiness in him, and yet he puts his detractors in their place time and again, doesn't he? He is a mature man. What does it mean to be mature? Well, one dictionary defined it this way, fully developed and balanced in their personality and emotional behavior. Another said, maturity is the art of being responsible for your actions, being sensitive and considerate toward others, and having the ability to change and adapt to circumstances. Typically, we might tell a person to grow up when they're moaning some trivial wrong or continually processing some wound they have suffered. And Landers wrote that people display maturity and patience, perseverance, decision-making, dependability, self-control, and humility. That is, the ability to admit simply, I was wrong. Interestingly, we don't measure maturity according to one's professional success, the degrees they have, or how wealthy they are. We have all met those who possess a great many nice things and are still quite immature. It seems that a grown-up, a mature person, is one who subordinates their own immediate good for a higher good. The most mature person, then, is not only the one capable of delayed gratification, but a person who makes the ultimate sacrifice for the good of the one they love. Their love of that other person, that person, is more important than they are. This can be in the small way of getting, giving their time, talent, or treasure, or the sacrifice of self it takes to admit we are wrong or in need of forgiveness, or the ultimate sacrifice of giving one's life so that the one we love can live. A parent is mature when they decide their child's welfare is more important than their own. A child becomes an adult when they realize their parent's welfare is more important than theirs. A brother is more mature than his sibling when he lets his brother surpass him and rejoice at it. Our Lord is never trite, is he? Today, a great many want Catholicism light while still being able to avail themselves of the wealth of a deep-seated faith. This indeed is the frustration of preaching the gospel, the real gospel, because the real gospel requir requires us to preach what Christ taught, mainly, take up your cross and follow me. Believe me, I have scoured the gospels looking for even one passage in which he taught, believe in me and you will have no problems. Follow me, and I will make you rich, famous, and comfortable. I, I know Greek, and so I've even tried to translate the Greek that way, and it didn't work. Instead, his greatest sermon said, Blessed are the poor, those who mourn, the meek, the pure of heart, those who are persecuted. There is no way to get around the fact that the real Jesus said this not the fairy tale Jesus we conjure up in our minds because the real Jesus lived, he lived in the real world. The Lord teaches us not how to be nice. In fact, sometimes he's actually not very nice. He teaches us how to love, how to love. He teaches us what life is really all about. He teaches us what will fill us with joy for all eternity. He invites us not to superficial acquaintance with a really great guy. He invites us to an eternal and intimate relationship with the one who created us. 
who conceived us in his mind before we were conceived in our mother's womb. Jesus minces no words teaching us about life and death, being born and dying, marriage and raising children, what is actually important in the here and now. When we come to church, we, just, we don't just encounter a rock band or a disco ball or a self-help program. We encounter the Son of God who gave his life for us who is made truly present to us on this altar. Not a symbol, but real. When we are spiritually mature, then he has to be real. This means that our religious motivation goes beyond what we get out of it to, give, to how I give myself to it. And this it, of course, is not a thing but a person. Three persons, in fact, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. My dear friends, Jesus Christ invites us not to a series of entertainments making our lives more enjoyable. He invites us into a relationship of love with meaning and depth that gives our life purpose and worth. The only way this happens is if we respond with the same maturity and depth and the willingness to sacrifice, as in any rela real relationship, the willingness to sacrifice at least something for him. Let us stand together now and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the With faith and hope in the love of our Heavenly Father, we turn to him with these prayers and petitions. For the church, that during this Lenten season, she may follow her Lord with renewed love and devotion. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For civil leaders, they may serve their people with the mind and heart of Christ. We pray to the Lord. For all those who will be baptized, received into the church this Easter, we pray to the Lord. For an increase in vocations to the priesthood and consecrated life, we pray to the Lord. For peace in the world, for the safe return of the victims of the recent kidnappings in Nigeria, for their families, for those suffering from the effects of socialism and acts of war, natural disasters, we pray to the Lord. For the sick, that they will know the love and mercy of God in their sufferings. For Patrick McTeague, we pray to the Lord. And for all who have died, that they may rest from their labors in God's loving care. For Lois Hoffman, 
Jeremy Toomey, John Pike, Rick Musial, and for all the dead, we pray to the Lord. For the intention of this Mass, Conroy and the Byrne family, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask you grant all these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teaching of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by your gracious gift each year, your faithful await the sacred paschal feast with joy of minds made pure, so that more eagerly intent on prayer and on the works of charity and participating in the mysteries by which they have been reborn, they may be led to the fullness of grace that you bestow on your sons and daughters. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaho, Plenis Uncheli et Terra, You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, 
with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Petronella and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Ronald, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, at the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of God and the glory of God, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Christ. The blood of Christ.
Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Join St. Pat's as we travel to Springfield for the March for Life on Wednesday, April 17th. We will march for the life of every child through the generosity of an anonymous donor. The cost per person is now $30, which includes transportation, bagged breakfast and lunch, and a hot dinner at Olive Garden, and posters for signs. See the bulletin for more information. We hope to see you there. The final fish fry of this Lenten season will be this coming Friday, March 22nd, from 5 to 7 p.m. in the Parish Life Center. Stations of the Cross are held every Friday in Lent at 7 p.m. in the church, and confessions during Lent are offered on Friday at 7 a.m., Saturdays at 8.30 a.m. and 4 p.m., and Sunday at 4 p.m. On April 6th, you are invited to a special showing of the film Babette's Feast with a discussion on the Eucharist following the movie. Dinner will be catered by Blackberry Market. This is an event for adults only. Wine will be served, and you're also invited to bring your own bottle. Reservations are due by March 20th, and tickets are $20. Please see the bulletin and the newsletter for details, or scan the QR code to register. And uh, the information everyone's been waiting for, Father Jerome, you okay? Okay. <laughs> Father Jerome Kish, PhD, you're getting a big bump up from where you're at, has been appointed the new pastor at St. Petronell Parish beginning July 1st. We will be publishing a picture and short letter from Father Jerome in the coming weeks. Please remember Father Kish and your present pastor in your prayers as they transition. And today is the 48th anniversary of the St. Joseph sweep table, and so we are combining St. Joseph and St. Patrick, St. Posef, in our celebration. At the end of this Mass, please follow the priest over to the Parish Life Center. We have a great gathering, wonderful baked items by your fellow parishioners, and terrific fellowship. Stop by and get your blessed bread and try our world-famous cannoli. See you there. Okay, we're almost done, buddy. Okay. <laughs> You're a trooper. All right. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. Bless, O Lord, your people who long for the gift of your mercy and grant that what at your prompting they desire they may receive by your generous gift through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit.